جنابی سپیکر جنابی سپیکر افسوس سے کہنا پڑتا ہے یہ آج میرا میجن سپیچ ہے نیشنل اسیمبلی میں یہ جو دو بڑی جماعتیں نے آج حرکت کیا ہے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ پاکستان کی عوام اس تماشا کو پسند نہیں کرتے ہوں گے جتنا پیسہ خرچ کیا گیا ہے اس الیکشن میں جتنا خون دیا گیا ہے اس الیکشن میں ہم نے ان عوام کو مایوس نہیں کرنا تھا اور آج کا جو احتجاج ہے احتجاج شموری حق ہوتا ہے مگر میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ احتجاج جو ٹریجری بینچے سے بھی ہوئے ہیں یہ بھی ناقابل قبول تھا اور مسٹر سپیکر میں ایکسپیکٹ کرتا ہوں کہ آپ اپنا ہاؤس کو آگے جا کے آرڈر میں رکھیں گے مسٹر سپیکر I bow my head in gratitude before Almighty Allah that I have been blessed with the opportunity to be a member of this August House. This House, this House is the supreme institution. It is the mother of all institutions. It is a repository of the will of the people of Pakistan the very foundations of which, the very, very foundations of which, from the foundation stone to the 1973 constitution were put in place by Qaeda Awam Shaheed Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto. Where Shaheed Mautama Benazir Bhutto served as both leader of the house and leader of the opposition, the first female prime minister of Pakistan and the first female prime minister in the Muslim world. It is indeed a great honor and a challenge for me to be here today. Ye jo awam ka ghar hai, it has survived attacks from both within and from without. And while we congratulate you, Mr. Speaker, on being elected to your office, we pray that you in a bipartisan manner, in an impartial manner, with all the political parties, 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 with all the political I would like to start by paying tribute, tribute to Shaheed Haroon Bulo and the 20 martyrs of the Peshawar attack. I would like to pay tribute to Shaheed Siraj Raisani and the 128 martyrs of the Mustung attack. I would like to pay tribute to Shaheed Ikramullah Gandapur. I would like to pay tribute to the 32 martyrs of the election day, Quetta attack. I would like to pay tribute to all the victims of violence in this election, Mr. Speaker, from law enforcement agencies to police to the citizens of Pakistan. In an election, Mr. Speaker, that the Election Commission of Pakistan called peaceful across the country. Shame. Shame. Mr. Speaker, we have gotten used to having bloody elections after blood to bloody elections. We lose lives we never get back. The dead never get justice. The survivors never get answers. This must change, Mr. Speaker, and this is why the Pakistan People's Party demands a full-fledged investigation into each and every terrorist attack that took place this election cycle. The facts must come out and must be presented before this House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the 2018 general elections have showed us that we have not learned from history. That elections are still manipulated, 
that there is no level playing field. We saw media hype for some and media blackout for others. We saw some candidates get their results within two hours and others it took three days. There was pre-poll rigging, Mr. Speaker, and there was post-poll rigging. Form 45s are missing to this day. Polling agents were kicked out of polling stations across the country. The supposed, supposed failure of the RTS system, the continued violation of the Electoral Act 2017, the list is long, Mr. Speaker, and the list is shameful, Mr. Speaker. Despite our reservations, despite having rejected the electoral process, the Pakistan People's Party decided to be a member of this House, to take part of the democratic process, to not allow for any untoward incidents towards our fragile democracy. And we took it upon ourselves to approach other political parties, who had not only rejected the results, but also refused to be members of this House. And I thank all opposition parties for agreeing to be part of the democratic process, for agreeing to be part and members of this Parliament. And I believe that the Prime Minister too should thank opposition parties, Mr. Speaker. For if it wasn't for the opposition parties, Mr. Speaker, you would not be sitting on your chair, the Prime Minister would not have his chair, and Khudana Khasta would be facing a constitutional crisis. The Pakistan, the Pakistan People's Party has always, always preference parliamentary supremacy, always guarded democratic rights, but this does not mean that we will let anyone get away with the discrepancies of the, this election and we therefore join all other opposition parties in demanding a parliamentary commission to investigate these discrepancies. This commission should be formed with members of both houses of the National Assembly and Senate of Pakistan. Let the truth come out, Mr. Speaker. And it's beyond, it's beyond just accusations of election rigging, Mr. Speaker. We must assess what it has cost for Khan Saab to take this space today. Because it has cost us dearly, Mr. Speaker. We've compromised on our democracy. We've lost our freedoms. Freedom of association, freedom of dissent, freedoms of the, freedoms of the press. We've compromised on our fundamental human rights, Mr. Speaker. We've ceded space of this parliament We've weaponized 62 and 63. We've mainstreamed extremism. We've exploited, we've exploited religion for political gain. We've pitted one Pakistani against another, Mr. Speaker. And worst of all, worst of all, we've taught an entire generation of Pakistanis that right, might is right. I hope, I hope, Mr. Speaker, that the price, the price we've paid is worth paying because we'll be paying this price for generations to come. In addition to these challenges, Mr. Speaker, in addition to these democratic challenges, Mr. Speaker, our country faces many problems. Our Prime Minister-elect has promised to deliver a roadmap within his first 100 days. I look forward to seeing how he will create 10 million new jobs, build 5 million new homes, end poverty, end corruption, end our water crisis, reinvigorate our industries, support our farmers, and lest we forget, create the South Punjab province. Our economy is in a dire straits, Mr. Speaker. We're drowning in debt. We have an economy that works for the few, and not for the many. It is in need of radical reform. I'd like to remind the Prime Minister-elect of some of the promises he made. I believe he said that he would rather commit suicide than take a begging bowl and ask for loans. I believe he said he would not go to the IMF. So we all, we all are, in, are in anticipation for what alternative plans will be presented to remove us from these, 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 these difficult times and the disastrous nature in which we, the economy, Prime Minister Saab, will inherit. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, 
We have foreign policy challenges. Pakistan today stands isolated. We have antagonized our neighbors. We have lost our prestige on the world stage. And while this narrative is hurtful, because Pakistan has sacrificed so much in the fight against violent extremism, Pakistan is seen as part of the problem and not as part of the solution. And while I'm sure the new government will take all efforts to, to take Pakistan's narrative to the world, to explain Pakistan's position in the world, we also must find the courage, Mr. Speaker, to look inwards. We must find this courage to look inwards and address our own faults. If we do not find the courage to confront violent extremism, it will not, have, not only have consequences for our foreign policy, it will not only antagonize the world at large, but it will damage the future coming generations. It will damage the future of our coming generations in Pakistan. It should be the incoming government's top priority. I believe that the government is committed. I believe that the government is committed to implementing the National Action Plan and the opposition will hold them accountable to that promise. However, Khan Saab got here, Mr. Speaker. However, Khan Saab got here, Mr. Speaker, he is now to be the Prime Minister of this worthy nation. The people of Pakistan are looking to him to solve their issues through us, the democratically elected representatives of the people. May Vizir Azam elect Ko Mubarak Baat Dene Ke Saat Saat Ye Yaad Dilana Chahunga Ke Wo Kisi Maksus Jamaat Ka Vizir Azam Nahi Hai Wo Pura Pakistan Ka Vizir Azam Hai Har Pakistani Ka Vizir Azam Hai He is also the Prime Minister of those Pakistanis he called Zinda Lashe. He is also the Prime Minister of those Pakistanis he called Donkeys. He is also the Prime Minister of those Pakistanis he referred to as Goats and Sheep. Vizir Azam Pakistan ki haisiyat mein Mr. Speaker. Vizir Azam Pakistan ki haisiyat mein Mr. Speaker. Mujhe umeed hai. کہ خان صاحب ماضی کے نفرت انگیز سیاست سے گریز کریں گے اپنی انتہا پسندی کی سیاست سے گریز کریں گے اور جس انٹولرنس کی کلچر کو آج تک فروغ دیتے آئے ہیں اس کو دفن کر کے پورے ملک کو ساتھ لے کر چلیں گے اگر the prime minister elects persists in spreading intolerance fanning the flames of bigotry, if he undermines the dignity of this house or the supremacy of the constitution of Pakistan, he will have to go through us and he will find us opposing him every step of the way. Because the Pakistan People's Party, the Pakistan People's Party has never and will never compromise on the interests of the people of Pakistan, compromise on the interests of democracy or compromise on the interests of this gay country. However, Mr. Speaker, agar Vizir Azam elect ne constitutional supremacy, Palamani supremacy, or greater public interest ko, awam ke musail ko, apna maksad banaya, then he will find us standing in his support. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank and congratulate the Prime Minister select and wish him good luck.